If there's one thing you can count on in just about every horror movie, it's death, and typically a lot of it. Even the least formulaic horror film will typically see a group of hapless victims picked off by an antagonistic force, whether flesh and blood or supernatural, ensuring the screen is soon enough littered with bodies. And who among us doesn't love a good fake-out, where an apparently dead character returns from the brink of death and reveals they're not quite ready for the eternal nap just yet? With that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 times you totally thought horror movie characters were dead, but they weren't. Number 10. Sondra Dickerson in Halloween Kills Sondra Dickerson was a minor but memorable character in 2018's Halloween. Laurie Strode's neighbour, who reappears in sequel Halloween Kills, where she and her husband are brutally attacked by Michael Myers. While trying to fight Michael off, Sandra is stabbed in the neck with a broken light tube, and as she seemingly bleeds out from her horrific injury, she's additionally forced to watch as Michael tests out a set of kitchen knives on her husband. There didn't seem to be any doubt at all as to Sandra's demise given the traumatic extent of her injuries, but sure enough, she shows up again in Halloween Ends. When Laurie is out shopping in Haddonfield, she's confronted by Sondra's sister, who blames her for bringing Michael back to the town, before we see Sondra, who sports a huge scar on her neck and is now unable to speak, while also being wheelchair-bound as a result of the attack. Having suffered enough, Sondra at least survives the events of the film, and is even present when Michael is pulped by an industrial car crusher at the end of the movie. Number 9. Ben Mitchell in Wolf Creek Wolf Creek follows two British tourists, Liz and Christy, who are backpacking across Australia with their Aussie pal Ben when they're pursued by sadistic outback serial killer Mick Taylor. Roughly halfway through the movie, the trio are drugged by Taylor, at which point Ben disappears out of the movie and is presumed dead, with the focus shifting to Liz and Christie's attempts to survive. Later, Liz stumbles across Ben's camera in Taylor's garage, lending further credibility to Ben's apparent demise. The rest of the story then plays out, and though we as an audience are conditioned to expect either Liz or Christy to survive as the final girl, Liz is implied to have been killed off screen and Christy is shot dead at the end. But just as it feels like the movie's over, an epilogue reveals that Ben is still alive, having woken up in a mine shaft. He manages to free himself and after wandering the blistering outback for a while, is rescued by a Swedish couple passing through. Number 8. Brenda Bates in Urban Legend now, here we're generally avoiding horror movie villains because it's just so damn expected that they'll avert death for the sequel. But in the case of urban legend's Brenda Bates, we'll make an exception. After all, she's not a supernatural antagonist like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees, and there wasn't really any indication that the film was angling to set up a glut of sequels. And in the finale, Brenda certainly seems to be deader than dead. After she's shot, falls out of a window, and in her last-ditch attempt to kill the remaining survivors, is ejected through their car windshield and falls a solid 30 feet into the river below. Given that Urban Legend felt very much like a one-and-done movie, that appeared to be the end of Brenda, until the final scene a few minutes later reveals that she inexplicably survived and has started up her killing spree again at another university. Number 7. Sherman Preacher Dudley in Deep Blue Sea one of Deep Blue Sea's most memorable moments sees badass cook Sherman Preacher Dudley appear to lay down his life in order to obliterate one of the genetically engineered sharks roaming throughout the remote underwater facility. Preacher faces off against the shark that ate his pet parrot, and in an act of self-sacrificing revenge, throws a lighter into the nearby oven, triggering an explosion which apparently obliterates both the shark and Preacher. But about 10 minutes later, we see Preacher reappear largely unscathed in a moment of tremendous levity. Admittedly, if you think rationally about it for a moment, it was probably a stretch for the movie to kill its only two black characters off within three minutes of each other, given that Samuel L. Jackson's Russell Franklin famously bites it in the very next scene. Still, director Rennie Harlan plays Preacher's demise totally straight, ensuring his surprise return is a genuinely euphoric, fist-pumping moment. Number 6. Jill Tuck in Saw 3D the final Saw film in the original chronology is centred around jigsaw killer Detective Hoffman facing off against John Kramer's ex-wife, Jill Tuck. But this showdown seems to arrive prematurely, as not even 20 minutes into the movie, Jill is captured by Hoffman and strapped into a trap where a bladed, railed vehicle is driven through her, apparently tearing her body to pieces in sublimely disgusting fashion. In 3D, no less. We're only given a few seconds to process the shock of the movie killing off the only person left to stand off against Hoffman, though, before we cut to Jill shooting up out of bed in terror. Alas, t'was a mere nightmare. 
Ironically though, Jill does die at the end of Saw 3D when Hoffman captures her for real and places the series' iconic reverse bear trap over her head, promptly ripping her face to pieces. Number 5. Norman Nordstrom in Don't Breathe 2 Many were baffled when a Don't Breathe sequel was announced, because how do you get audiences to root for a man, Norman Nordstrom, who in the first film was revealed to be a rapist? In Don't Breathe 2, set eight years later, Norman is living with his 11-year-old adopted daughter Phoenix when her biological father and his cronies come a-knocking in an attempt to kidnap her. For the bulk of its runtime, the sequel seemingly seeks to redeem Norman by having him protect Phoenix from her degenerate father and his goons. Norman ultimately succeeds but is mortally wounded in the final showdown, after which he confesses his horrible prior crimes to Phoenix and dies in her arms. A fitting death for a deeply troubled individual who at least occasionally did the right thing, right? Except the film's mid credit scene throws that fitting ending out completely, by showing a dog licking Norman's fingers and rousing him awake, confirming his continued existence for another potential sequel. Given that Don't Breathe 2 received wildly mixed reviews and grossed barely one third of the original at the box office though, don't count on a third entry anytime soon. Number 4. Black in Exam Exam is a psychological horror thriller in which eight job candidates are locked in a room together and must figure out how to answer an exam paper without a question written on it. Inevitably, the bodies start piling up as the situation becomes increasingly dire, and in the film's climax, one of the unnamed candidates, given the nickname Black, is shot by a fellow candidate, White. Given that Black seems to have been shot in the heart, he appears to quickly expire, but a few scenes later, once the exam has been completed, we learn that Black was actually shot with a bullet containing a cure to the viral pandemic raging in the outside world, of which Black is a carrier. A stunned but very much alive Black then sits up and while ultimately failing to win the job, at least gets out with his life intact. Number 3. John Pass in Possessor Brandon Cronenberg's Possessor is an absolutely ruthless sci-fi horror film in which assassin Tassia Voss controls the bodies of other people in order to carry out her hits. Tassia's latest job is to kill wealthy CEO John Pass and his daughter Ava, which she achieves by, while possessing the body of Ava's fiancé Colin, shooting Ava repeatedly and then viciously attacking John with a fire poker. Tassia beats John's face with the poker before shoving it into his mouth, ripping out his teeth and then tearing out one of his eyeballs for good measure. Though we don't see John expire on screen, the injuries appear traumatic enough to ensure that he is dead. But alas, it's subsequently revealed that Pass in fact survived the brutal attack and is indeed still alive when the end credits roll. Given Sean Bean's penchant for cinematic death, it is pretty hilarious that his character managed to make it through such a nauseating assault with his life intact. Number 2. Tara Carpenter in Scream The recent fifth Scream film opens with a thoroughly entertaining homage to Wes Craven's original, with an opening kill mimicking the iconic opening death of Drew Barrymore's Casey Becker in the first film. This time the victim is Tara Carpenter, who similarly engages in some playful phone banter with Ghostface before things turn ugly and she's attacked. Tara puts up one hell of a fight but suffers severe injuries, including a broken leg and being stabbed seven times, and the sequence then concludes with Ghostface performing an apparently fatal slash to a helpless Tara. Even though we don't see the life-ending slash, given that Jenna Ortega wasn't featured in any other scenes in the movie's marketing, there wasn't any reason to be suspicious. She was dead as dead, surely. Except a single scene later, we learn that Tara in fact survived her encounter with Ghostface and is now in the hospital recuperating from her extensive injuries. Better yet, Tara ends up playing a major role in the rest of the movie alongside her sister Sam, and in addition to surviving to the end, even gets to shoot one of the killers and the dead. Number 1. Everybody in April Fool's Day April Fool's Day revolves around a group of college students who are murdered by an unknown assailant while vacationing in a remote island estate on April Fool's Day weekend. The film's title and setting are so on the nose that audiences likely end up confident that the film won't pull off the most obvious of plot twists, that the kills throughout the film are actually part of an elaborate prank. And so when characters are decapitated and stabbed, mostly off screen, it feels like we're being set up for a climactic reveal that indeed these kills really did happen. But as it turns out, all seven deaths in the film were faked by the mansion's owner, who wants to turn the mansion into a murder mystery resort. She had a special effects artist friend help create convincing gore, and all of the victims were ultimately in on it too. 
And that concludes our list. If you think we missed anything, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.